after I speak, after 10 seconds. Perfect. Thank you. Mr. Chair, we are live. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Councillor Paul Lingsley. I'm the chair of the General Government and Licensing Committee. The clerk has confirmed that we have quorum, and I would like to call meeting number 23 to order. Today's meeting is being held by video conference. City staff are also connected to the meeting by video conference. As City Hall remains closed, the public will continue to participate electronically. And you can watch our meeting today streaming live on YouTube at youtube.com slash Toronto City Council Live. The City Clerk staff have connected all registered speakers to the meeting by audio. The list of speakers can be viewed by visiting the General Government Licensing Committee's page at toronto.ca slash council and clicking the speakers box for today's meeting. I ask for everyone's patience if we experience any delays or technical problems during the meeting. Uh, members, city, the city clerk has provided all agenda materials on toronto.ca slash council and also on the city clerk's meeting portal. Clerk's I, Steve, IT staff are available remotely if you need to help uh, any assistance or help with your uh, de electronic devices. I'd like to remind staff to please keep their mukes, mics muted and their videos turned off unless they need to answer questions or speak with the committee. This will make it easier for me as the chair and for those watching on YouTube to observe city council members as they participate in the debate and vote on items. Members, please keep your mic muted unless you wish to question staff or speak on an item and also just a reminder to ensure your video is turned on. As part of the agenda, I'm going to ask members to raise their hand or unmute their mic if they wish to staff, question staff or speak. I'll then create a speakers list and we'll call on members when it's their turn to speak. When voting on an item or a motion, I'd like to remind members to ensure they keep their video on and raise their hand to indicate their vote. Uh, members, I want to further remind you, you must still submit and approve your motions by email. Staff are available at gglc at toronto.ca to help with your motions. If there's any visiting members of council attending the meeting today, I'd ask you to please turn on your video so I know you're present and can give you an opportunity to question or um, speak. There will also be, this will also assist the city clerk staff to record attendance for our meeting today. Although we're in different locations and meeting remotely today, the committee would like to acknowledge the land we're meeting on as the traditional territories of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Onondaga, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty Number no. 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. At this point, I'll ask if there's any declarations of interest under the Ontario Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. Seeing none, can I have a motion to confirm the minutes of our meeting on April 26, 2021? Moved by Councillor Holliday. All in favour? Uh, members, we're going to now move to uh, review the order paper. I'm just going to. Okay, so currently we don't have any registered speakers for today, so I will uh, start going through the agenda. Uh, item num number one, sorry, the annual report to City Council on 311. Are there any holds on this one? Would somebody like to move the recommendations? 
Councillor Holliday is moving the uh, recommendations. I'll, I'll move it, Mr. Chair, and just say nice job on the, the attachment, which is the summary page. Everyone should look at it. Yeah. Yep. Thank you very much. All in favor? That carries. Item number two is update to the City of Toronto's corporate accessibility policy. Somebody like to move the recommendations? Councillor Nunziata is moving the recommendations. All in favor? Those are carried. Uh, number three is a report on Bill 177, Stronger, Fairer Ontario Act changes to the Provincial Offences Act. Somebody like to move the recommendations? I'll move the recommendations, Matthew. All in favor? Carried. Uh, number four, Toronto Public Library lease agreement at 2900 Warden Avenue in Ward 22. Let's move uh, staff recommendations. Councillor Mantos is moving staff recommendations. Thank you, Councillor Mantos. All in favor? Carried. Uh, number five is the amendment to the Liberty Grand Entertainment Complex Incorporated Lease in Ward 10. There is a confidential attachment to this item. Somebody like to move the recommendations? Councillor Filion, all in favor? Carried. Uh, number six, 376 Dundas 3D, East, designation of the property used by Shelter Support and Housing Administration as a municipal capital facility in Ward 13. Would you like to move the recommendations? Councillor Filion, all in favor? Carried. Uh, number eight, application for approval to expropriate 81 Bloor Street East and 40 to 42 Hayden Street for the Bloor Young Capacity Improvement Project in the first stage one in Ward 11. Councillor Holliday is moving the recommendations. All in favor? Carried. Sorry. Sorry. I, yes. I think we may have skipped number seven. Did I skip number seven? Uh, my apologies. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, 23.7, 556 Sherburne Street, designation of a portion of the property used by Shelter Support and Housing Administration as a municipal capital facility in Ward 13. Councillor Filion's moving the recommendations. All in favor? Carried. Uh, doo, 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 number nine. Scarlet Road Bridge Reconstruction Project Expropriations Stage 1 in Ward 4. Uh, I'll move it. It's in Ward 4 and Ward 5. Okay. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Deputy Speaker Nunziata, all in favor? Sorry, did I say Deputy Speaker? Speaker Nunziata, my apologies. I need, I need more and stronger coffee this morning. Uh, number 10, expropriation of easements for the Port Union Road widening in Stage 2, Ward 25. Councillor Holliday is moving the recommendations. All in favor? Carried. Uh, number 11, award of source well contract number 110520-GPC to Genuine Parts Company operating as NAPA Integrated Business Solutions for the provision of inventory management solutions. Councillor Holliday is moving the recommendations. All in favor? Carried. Number 12, amendment to blanket contract 47021793 with Enterprise Rent-A-Car Canada for short-term vehicle renters, rental services. Councillor Matlow, would you like to move that? Councillor, I'll take that as a yes. Moved by Councillor Matlow. All in favor? Carried. Number 13, I, amendments. Councillor Ainsley, I, I'm so sorry. I'd rather not move it. I, I didn't realize that I was on mute. Okay, if not a mind, problem. Carriage. Thank you. I will, I will take care of number 12. All in favor? Carried. Number 13, amendment to non-competitive blanket contract number 4702034 for the provision of portable washrooms and sinks in City of Toronto Parks. Hold, please. Councillor Holliday. Holliday is holding number 13. Number 14, amendment to blanket contract 4702258 issued to the Toronto 
Dry Dock Limited for emergency dry docking. Councilor Man Mantis, can I ask you to move that one? Councilor Mantis is moving number 14. All in favor? Carried. Number 15, amendment to blanket contract number 47023379 with Salesforce.com Canada Corporation. Hold for a few questions, Councilor Filion. Thank you, Councilor Filion. Councilor Filion is holding number 13, sorry, number 15. Number 16, amendment to blanket contract 47021569 to G4S Secure Solutions Canada. Limited for the provision of contract security services. Mass for a mover. Councillor Holliday is moving number 16. All in favor? Carried. Uh, number 17 is 2053 Dufferin Street, Municipal Car Park 670 in uh, Ward 12. Councillor Matlow. Is moving the recommendations for number 17. All in favor? And that is carried. Okay, we will go back to our first um, hold. Mr. Chair, there's oh, a sorry. item I that I would like to add. Yep, my apologies. I have two items of new business. And I'm just going to go back to my script so I don't make any mistakes. Sorry, just a moment. All right, so um, just to keep everything in order here and follow my script, uh, Councillor Mantis, I understand there's an item on new business you would like to introduce. Yes. Could uh, we have the item displayed on the screen, please? There's a letter from Councillor Mantis, letter from Councillor Mantis and Councillor Perks. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. We're uh, just going to display the letter now. Okay. All those in favor of adding this item to the agenda? Any opposed? And that carries, that'll be added to the agenda. I will leave it up for members to read over um, at the appropriate time. And then I have an item, Councillor Filion, you also have an item of new business you would like to add. Uh, yes, just adding a staff report related to a new uh, food incubator at um, 5200 Young Street. Okay. All in favor of adding the new item of business from Councillor Filion? Any opposed? And that uh, carries. All right. We have those two items, so they'll come at the end of the agenda. Thank you for the reminder to both Councillor Mansis and Councillor Filion. I will know our, so our first item of business is uh, doo, 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 number 13, amendment to non-competitive blanket contract 47023034 for the provision of portable washrooms and sinks in city of Toronto parks. And that was held by Deputy Mayor Holliday. Deputy Mayor Holliday, do you have questions of staff? I do, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the staff are available. I think the question is for parks, uh, at least at the beginning. Have we got I'm someone? Here. I'm uh, here. I'm here, Councillor Holliday, Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Um, uh, I wondered if, uh, Jane, if you could explain to us just the, the governance around this. I understand that this is uh, 50 portable washrooms and sinks that are um, required to be used around encampments. But there's some dialogue in the report that they were directed by the Office of Emergency Management. Can you explain to me the mechanics of how that works? How the uh, uh, Office of Emergency Management uh, directs parks? Sh sure. Uh, so through the chair. So this is an item, uh, and again, it, the, the contract's been extended because uh, we began it last year for uh, an emergency 
sort of conditions around what was going on in parks and uh, unfortunately have had to continue it into the summer. The Office of Emergency Management coordinates uh, all of the, you know, what we would call emergency vendor contracts that are specifically related to COVID-19 and not specifically related to parks operations. And the reason that it's it's coming through the Office of Emergency Management, although we manage the contract because it's in parks, the need and the approval for the contract itself is through the Office of Emergency Management. So okay. it's, it's a bit of a dual, and I, and, I, and I guess the best way to describe it would be in, in a normal summer uh, when uh, we were not experiencing the impacts of COVID-19 in parks, this would not be a contract that uh, PFNR would be pursuing. So it's a, it's a temporary thing, very, very specific to COVID-19 and the, and the city's emergency response. So this is where I, I get really confused then. So the original contract was, I don't know, just over $500,000 for washrooms. You normally, you normally rent those no matter what, just for, for parks purposes. But this is a significant uh, extension to, I guess, $2.9 million. But it's going forward. If I understand the report, up until June 18th, all of those extensions are already dealt with. And so this is from June 18th, 2021, and going two years forward. Is that, have I understood that correctly? Uh I, I can ask, I know I have staff uh, on the phone, Kathy Vincelli, uh, who's been directly involved in the contract terms, but the reason for the two year commitment uh, through the chair is, uh, is, a, is a just in case approach. So the idea would be, and, and hopefully we will not need to pursue uh, this contract for a, for a two year period. It will be until and as needed. Okay. If that's helpful. And how many encampments do we have today? So this is 50 toilets. How many are around right now? It is the number growing or shrinking? Uh, so through the chair, I, 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 uh, I couldn't tell you an exact number. I know work is ongoing and it's being led through uh, uh, the Office of Emergency Management right now. Um, I can ask staff to comment specifically. Uh, Esther, after that, are you on, on the line? Uh, Janie, it's Kathy. I can answer that question. Uh, right now, okay, we have Thank you. 370 encampments in 58 parks. So it has grown consistently. Um, in February, we had uh, 294 in 45 parks, but we're now up to 370 in 58 parks. And, and the number continues to grow? Yes, it does. Okay. And is staff anticipating it to continue to grow? Uh, going forward, despite, I mean, I know there was discussion around COVID and so on, but, but things are different so I, now, I think, right? Um, through, through the, through the chair, uh, you know, uh, to the deputy mayor, I mean, these are very complicated issues, obviously, and, and it's a multi, uh, you know, cross divisional approach around how, uh, to manage encampments, not just in parks, but on the public right of way as well. And, uh, you know, I, I, I couldn't comment just on, on, on PFNR. I'm, I'm not sort of the the sole lead on, on the approach to encampments. Uh, it's being, uh, again, uh, run through the Office of Emergency Management. So, uh, you know, I think it would be a, a different type of update on, on your question, Council. Okay, I, I, and that's that's fair enough, Mr. Chair. If I just maybe just round it out, just just finally with the, the last question is, is, is just, Janie, if you could confirm, if somebody confirm, you know, the, the major decisions here with respect to encampments, enforcements, that sort of stuff, is that is that run through the Office of Emergency Management? Is there a decision making structure there? I mean, you might be part of it as parks, but that's where the decisions are made. Have I got? I just want to understand where the accountability is because parks is asking to deal with the contract. Uh, you know, the accountability I, I would say is a is a cross uh, is a cross corporate accountability. Uh, ultimately, with Deputy uh, City Manager Tracy Cook, who is coordinating the cross corporate approach. Jim Jessup, uh, Deputy Fire Chief, is the corporate lead on that right now, and there is a group together with uh, all of the divisions that are involved in in uh, any any uh, sort of uh, uh, impact around encampments, including PFNR, Transportation Services, Solid Waste, Corporate Security, Municipal Licensing and Standards. So there's a number of different divisions that are involved under that sort of uh, uh, leadership structure. 
thank you ad hoc i should say that, that has been created you know specifically around this particular issue okay thank you deputy mayor holiday councilor matlow did i see your hand for questions thanks go ahead uh, mr chair uh, my, my question is is not at all to do about <clears throat> whether or not uh, there should be encampments but more um consistency of policy so what is the city's position with regard to the encampments? Does the city uh, accept that they should continue to uh, be there in our parks, or is the city's position that they should be <clears throat> that the that the residents there should be uh, provided uh, shelter? Uh, in so th through the through the chair, if I may, uh, and and with respect, uh, Councillor Matlow, I, I I'm not sure I'm. The appropriate spokesperson on oh, on that particular Janie. item. I think these are. I'm not asking you then. I, I'm I'm okay. through the chair to the appropriate staff. So, uh, through the the chair. So, Councillor Matlow, that's a good question. And the city's policy and approach is that everybody deserves a safe indoor space. The encampments aren't totally safe, and we you've seen the number of um, incidents that we've had, and so that's we're working very hard across all divisions and with our streets to homes to engage with the encampment residents to move them into safe indoor spaces. Thank you. So, so that being said, if that is the city's uh, position, then, then how, how, does it, how does it correspond that the city would then uh, spend money to provide uh, portable uh, toilets Specific. I, mean, I understand sort of if we want to provide uh, portable uh, bathrooms to parks for any park user, there's been a request of that throughout the city. But in particular to encampments, why would we do that at the same time? Uh, our, our, uh, the city's formal policy is that they, they don't believe that they're safe and that people should go to shelters. So it does, through the chair, it does take us time to clear the encampments. We're, we're working very hard and trying to move as quickly as possible, working with the tenants. Uh, connecting them to housing, making sure we have the spaces before we go into a park to clear the encampment. So in the interim, we're going to need additional washrooms. We can't have them. We don't want them. They need somewhere to go until we can get around to all of the parks. And then we're also talking about how we keep the parks animated to make sure that, you know, if people need um, a place to stay, they're homeless and they need a place to stay that we can uh, more quickly link them to indoor spaces. But in the interim, we need we need we're not going to be able to clear them all like overnight. So, so that's what, why it, what, it, what is the definition right you as uh, what what does interim mean? Well, we're hoping to get them cleared over the next few weeks, but I can't. You know, as I say, it's a bit complicated, and we have to always ensure that as we go in to clear an encampment, we have enough uh, shelter spaces and hotel spaces to move the individuals into. So we're working very hard and as fast as we can. Um, as Tracy mentioned, Jim, Deputy Jim Joseph is the lead right now, and we're connecting on a daily basis on how we move forward. And it's very much an interdivisional approach. A number so, of divisions are involved. It, so, so we'd be spending $3 million for portable toilets for a few weeks? So this is to make sure we have contracts in place that if we have to redeploy these toilets, they're there. If once we can get them cleared and we can stop, we will stop. Um, we also anticipate there might be increased use of, of parks during the summer months. So we're just trying to be prepared for what might come. But we're not going to just redeploy all of these if they're not necessary. But that, that's what I'm confused about. So like if this read that we wanted portable bathrooms for parks because there's an increased use and demand for parks that's one thing but what i'm trying to get my what, what i'm trying to see the consistency in is if the city's policy again regardless of where one is on that debate i know it's very controversial but if the city's position is that uh the city doesn't support having the encampments that they believe they're unsafe and that people should move into shelter indoor shelters and if you're if what you're saying is correct is that uh, this is a matter of of, of weeks. Why 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 would we be spending three million dollars uh, on on that objective specifically? Why would we not be if we are purchasing these portable bathrooms? Why would they not just be to have in the city's inventory for 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 whatever the use might be and whatever the demand might be? 
So through, if I can just clarify uh, through the through the chair uh, to Councillor Math Matlow, the the con the contract is is intended to be at a maximum as a at, with a contingency if we need it. So certainly, as as Deputy City Manager Carbone has indicated, you know, if if there is no need for further portable washroom services in these parks, then the contract will only be utilized to the extent that we need it. And and uh, you know and I and our, our hope is that we will not need it for the full for the full period of the contract or to the full extent of the contract, but it does give us the flexibility to use what we need over a two year period. I appreciate that. I still don't I still don't fully understand how the two the two policy positions can jive though. I I, I, I just intellectually I don't understand how the city anyway. I won't reiterate it because I've said it a few times, but I just I, I need I need clarity on that because it doesn't make sense to me. Last question, Councillor. Oh, well, that was it. So I think so. Currently, our contracts. My understanding of the contracts are coming to an end, so we have to renew the contracts, and we're just trying to be prepared in future so that we don't have to keep coming back. There is the encampment issue, but there also, uh, you know. As we see, people have been coming more outdoors, so we may need these uh, encampments aside just to be able to pr provide appropriate uh, facilities if there's increased usage in our parks. But that's not what the motion says. So I stand corrected. So Jay, maybe Janie can clarify. My understanding I was could, this I, was just I a general. To, uh, to the chair, I wouldn't want to correct uh, co correct anyone. There's there is so so these you know to the as the motion notes is specifically because of increased need associated with uh, encampments. Um, there there is uh, the, the 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 portable toilets. And to your question uh, through the chair to Councillor Matlow. Uh, you know, the, the provision of these types of services is not something that can be done in house. There's very, uh, you know, specific cleaning approaches and, and very specific equipment that's needed for it. Uh, they are not exclusively for use of encampments. Certainly the general public is, is they are open and, and anyone uh, can use them. Uh, we do already uh, uh, deploy a number of portable washings to some of our high, uh, high use parks. Uh, but that, that's not specifically part of this contract. Okay, thank you, Councillor Matlow. Other questions of staff on this item? Councillor Nunziata. Actually, the questions that Councillor Matlow asked, I, I had questions on that as well. But just to Jane, um, what is the existing contract now for how many for how many toilets? I believe this is an extension of the existing contract. Uh, so you're adding, so you're adding additional toilets. Um, God, I'm just getting a note. And it's an additional 28 toilets from the existing contract from 22 to 50. So you're adding more because, uh, because your comment was that it, it's been increased. Because of the need, the I think the, the deployment is, is based on what, 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 what we see as, as the need. Okay, so, but, but this has nothing to do with what council approved as far as, um, I can't remember the motion at council, but putting um, washrooms in our parks. This has nothing to do no, with that. No, this is, this is through the chair. This is completely separate. That was this, very this, specific to sort of bricks and mortar washrooms that we have in our parks. And we did uh, through the chair to you, Councillor Nunziata, if you remember, uh, during the winter, we deployed a number of portable washrooms to parks where we had begun uh, clearing the trails because we weren't able to open our washrooms because they didn't have, they weren't winterized. So that, that was a separate issue around temporary washrooms. And, and we have been directed to look at how to winterize as many washrooms as possible so that uh, we wouldn't have to have the portable ones. Now, who, who is responsible for the maintenance? Of the portable the contract, the, the company is responsible for the for the maintenance on a on a cleaning schedule. Uh, I know Donna Kovacis is on and she can speak to what that cleaning schedule would be, but it's specific to public health guidelines as well. Okay, and that's all included in the uh, in the price. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, but just a question and going back to Councillor Matlow's uh, question. So if we're increasing the number of portable toilets. Um, I mean, we're trying to discourage encampments. 
Uh, would this not be encouraging more encampments because we're providing the facilities? Through, through the speaker, I, I think, you know, un, until we get to a point where there are no encampments, we're trying to ensure that there is, uh, you know, appropriate washroom f facilities to, to the need that, that we've seen in parks. Uh, it, it's really just responding to the need. It's, it's not, a, in our mind, it's, it's a very, um, you know, specific need right now. And obviously, if the washrooms aren't there, it, it creates other, other difficulties in the park. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Speaker Nunziata. Uh, other members of the committee that have questions on this item? Councillor Matlow, did you need another round? Well, just, uh, yeah, just to maybe yeah. contribute to a better way to move a motion. Uh, in yep. a sub I subjectively suggest. Uh, so I, I've heard from, from, from those of you from staff uh, who've responded that while this is both uh, an effort to have portable toilets available uh, for, you know, whether or not the city's position is that uh, it, it, it wants encampments or not, that while they're there, you want to provide a place uh, for, for people to use. Um, I've also heard from you that there is a demand uh, by, by, by users in general uh, to use our parks you know, in all sorts of ways, uh, playing catch, whatever. Uh, and and or we're doing yoga, or like, you know what I mean? Like people are using parks more than ever now because of the uh, pandemic. And there's often not an, a, a bathroom available. Could we not rewrite this in a way where we support having portable toilets for park users and not not uh, uh, institutionalize uh, or even without, you know, without, without making that effort, but essentially institutionalizing uh, things that that the city's position is not in, is not in favor of it because it does it it it's it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me uh, to do that and would there be any objection to sort of take a different approach to this where we are providing bathroom access at parks where there are no bathrooms regardless of 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 of, of who the user is in other words it's not about encampments it's not not about encampments it's about anybody any human who has that need which is all of us. So I, I'm, I'm not sure through the chair if this answers your question, Councillor Matlow, but we already deploy outside of this particular contract through a competitive contract that's been going on for many years, uh, approximately 100 portable washrooms every year to parks around the city, specifically for park user uh, use. And those are in areas of the city where there's extensive use of parks in the summer where there is no, uh, you know, washrooms close by or there aren't enough washroom facilities. So. That 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 part of it is is something that we've been doing for many many years under a separate contract. This is specifically to respond to the increase need that we have uh, right now, and and as I noted, they're not exclusively for that use, but <clears throat> but they are uh, you know really indicated through that need rather than through the other need. Well, then let, let's 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 explore it further. So uh, we have a hundred uh, portable bathrooms that you, you just described for general use in parks where there aren't bathrooms available. Um, let's say hypothetically, um, there there are uh, few to no encampments in in a few weeks, as was suggested by the deputy city manager. Let's say let's say that let's say that hypothetically happens, and let's say in in an emergency response, you go and purchase three million dollars worth of portable toilets. I know that you're saying you, you may not have to arrive at that number, but let's say you do or somewhere in between. And let's say then encampment need is not there anymore. And let's say everybody is provided supportive, caring, safe uh, uh, housing somewhere. Uh, what, so what do we do with all those portable toilets? So through the chair, as, as I noted, this this contract is basically- Sorry, Councilor Matlin, sorry. Maybe just as a point of clarification, the this is for rental, not purchase. That's correct. So it's okay. I, 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 that wasn't clear. So this is three up to $3 million for renting. I don't know if that makes me feel better or worse. As I say, through the chair, it is an upper limit. So if we're not, we're not going to be. You think we need $3 million you know, to rent toilets? Really? Well, like what, what, what? Yes. Because they also maintain them. 
it isn't just the renting, it's going in and cleaning them uh, on a, can't remember how many times a day, but twice they, a day. they're also responsible twice a, day. twice a day. So it isn't just the actual toilet, it's maintaining those toilets. Okay, in and fairness, would, you know, are, there, are, there, demand, are there complaints due to the encampments by local neighbors about um, people who are the, in the encampments who may not have access to a bathroom going places that uh, yes that are unwelcome is the, is this part of is this trying to address yes that? yes is that, is that the root of it well i mean there's you know i mean the, the root of it is that there are you know encampments and and that you know they're they're while they're there there needs to be appropriate uh you know uh washroom facilities and you know otherwise you know we have had complaints of other 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 issues and and uh you know as a deputy city manager noted it's really specific to a need that we have right now that hopefully won't continue uh you know for the for the long foreseeable future and last question is there any has there been any consideration that if 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 you create if you provide the infrastructure that that would further enable the encampments I'll defer that one to the deputy city manager. It's a larger policy issue. Oh. So through the chair, we deploy the washrooms when if there's a large encampment that's been established and there's a need there. We don't put them out to encourage encampments. We only respond when there's a large encampment. And then as those encampments get cleared, we can discontinue those rentals. It you know it is responding to a need. We bring them out when there's a high enough demand, and we're very focused on helping move these people to safe indoor spaces. It's a complicated issue. I wish I could give you some certainty, but we are all, it's a very coordinated, concerted effort. I believe it's a complicated people. issue. Thank you. Does <laughs> uh, anybody speak, else? Mr. Chair. Okay. Does anybody else require, sorry, have questions on this? Councillor Mansas, I see your hand. So you're still on mute, Councillor Mantos. Thank you, Chair Inslee. Uh, through the chair to Ms. Carbona, would we be able, um, adding on to Councillor Matlow's questions, would we be able to look, revise the uh, motion and to authorize the uh, amount for the year 21-22, which would have been the 1.4 million? instead of and revisit it again next year seeing if we will need to have the need instead of the entire 2.8 million i don't see an issue with with that we would just have to uh, come back next year if needed but Jeannie may know better be, be able to it's through the speaker it's it's really at the discretion of of committee i mean we were trying to i i think the idea would be that you know we were trying not to have this in front of uh council twice but if for a year i think you know that's fine too we have no objection to that uh councilor Ainsley, can i move a motion to uh, amend the uh the item Councillor, you can do that um, at the appropriate time when people okay. are speaking. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, sorry, Councillor Mance, is those handed your questions? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. Uh, does anybody else want to participate in the second round of questions? Councillor Filion? Um, yeah, just um, I, I'm can somebody say what the cost per a breakdown of the cost per toilet per day or or how is it uh, is it done on a daily basis a weekly basis a monthly basis councilor can can you give me 2 seconds and i'll get that information uh, for sure. you through the chair i'm just i'm just asking staff to send it to me And then I guess a second part of that is the extension of this contract. Is it at the same rate as the 
um, initial part of the contract. I guess I'm looking to whether we're getting a, uh, putting aside the issue of toilets and encampments, just uh, just dealing with so the extension you, of the contract. Are we getting a better deal because we're renting more, or a worse deal, or the same? So, to to your first question first around the cost per day, I'm not sure if this is helpful, but it's one hundred and sixteen thousand dollars per month for fifty portable washrooms. So I can have somebody do the math and split that up for you. Um, if you want to get the per day or per week uh, total. And well, how, how is it charged? I, I guess I'm looking for however it's charged. Do we have, is there a minimum rental of a month or what's the, what's the components of the total? Hang on, I'm going to ask staff. I, I'm going to ask staff to answer specifically as they have the details. Uh, Kathy or Esther? Yep, yeah, I'm here. It's Kathy. Um, so um, it's uh, it's charged as as used, right? So only what we used is charged. So if we only use 22, 25, 30, um, we're charged by month for what is used. Okay, so it's a monthly rental. And right. how much is the monthly rental? It's toilet? about fifty. Uh, sorry, just give me a second. It's about twenty-three hundred dollars per toilet uh, for the month, and that includes the twice daily cleaning, seven days a week. Okay, and how does with the ex extension of this contract? Is it the same uh, amount as the original price or is it more or is it less? The company has agreed to hold the same pricing of the original contract throughout the two years. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, I had some follow-up questions. Okay, Councilor Holliday. If Mr. If uh, Councilor Fillion's done. Yeah, sorry, are you done Councilor Fillion? Yep, okay, Deputy Mayor Holliday, second round. Thank you. Sometimes with more answers, they prompt more questions. Um, so $2,300 per toilet per month. How does that compare if I, um, I don't know, if I had a construction site and I wanted to rent a toilet? Is that a market value or is the city paying extra because they're in a park or, I don't know, for whatever reason? So through the chair, I, I really would, would send that question to someone from purchasing and materials management, if there's anybody online. Okay, while uh, we're waiting, we chair, go ahead. The chair, I, I don't have that specific specific number, but I, I, I would point out though that the that the one thing that might be different is that normally the cleaning, I believe this is a higher level of cleaning than what would be normally in a rental for for toilets. And I'm not sure on a construction site if they would have twice daily cleaning seven days a week um, as a comparator. So I think that's I don't, I don't know if I'd have a, a good comparison in this circumstance to what might be in a construction site. Okay. Um, and if I understand this correctly, those 50 toilets are already deployed today. Like there's not gonna be 50 more show up once this is approved by council. Have I got that right? So through the, through the chair, I, my, my note from staff says 22 are currently de, uh, deployed but it would give us the capacity to, de to deploy up to 50. Okay, I just, there's something in the report. In April, 2021, EOC directed PFR to make available an additional 28 toilets and sinks for a total up to 50. So that was in April. Have any of those since April, any of those 28 being deployed, do we know? None have yet been deployed through the chair. Okay. But they're asking for 28 more. And do we have a list of where they're going or? Uh, through the yeah. chair, I, working with the EOC, we would have a list of where they're required based on need. Okay. Thank you. That's it, uh, Mr. Chair. Speaker Nunziata, you had further questions? Question. Um, the, the question that Councillor Mantis asked about the contract being only one year rather than two years. So would that change the um, the the daily cost if it's the contract is less? Do you know? 
The chair, I'm going to uh, ask Mike to uh, answer. Uh, through the chair, uh, based on based on what staff has indicated, no. Like the 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 contractor has agreed to maintain the rates that he's charging on the existing contract through the two year term. The second year is actually an option year, so it's not it's not a committed two year term. So the rate shouldn't change. Okay. Thank you. Other questions of staff on this item? Seeing none. So, Janie, could I just ask? Um, so, parks generally, like it seems every time I put a playground in or, or a splash pad, kids, people will say to me at the meeting, you know, where kids going to go to the washrooms? And so there is a demand for for porta potties in parks across the city, correct? And that's correct. mainly around. Um, not only providing a service, but also ensuring that the parks are uh, maintain a certain level of cleanliness. Correct. Correct. Yep, I would agree with that. Okay, and then when we have parks where the encampments are in, um, you know, the so people are living in tents. There's no permanent washrooms, so we are providing porta potties until such a time. As the people can be, as the encampments can be shut down, correct to maintain that same level of cleanliness and the health a uh, health standard in our parks, not just for the people in the encampments, but in the general population, is my understanding correct? It, Mr. Chair, you're correct. Okay, and then I know we're trying to move. Uh, the goal of the city is that we're trying to move people out of the encampments um, because uh, the standard or the, the view is that people would have a better level of better level of standard of living in permanent housing than in tent encampments. But at the same time, we have no guarantee that when we move people out of encampments that they're not gonna move back into an encampment or you know, people are going to keep coming to the city of Toronto and create encampments. Is that my understanding, Ms. Carboni? We'll try our best to discourage further creation of an encampment, but we cannot control um, the movement of people and what they choose. Work very hard to make and move people to safer indoor spaces. They may not be permanent housing, you know. Initially, it will most likely be a shelter, and but then we we have within all our shelters we have housing support so that we connect people to appropriate housing with the supports they need in order to maintain that housing. Okay, and and I guess that's kind of the crux of the the debate we're having is that even if you have people that move into a shelter, and I've you know there's been lots of reports in the media, and you know people have gone into shelters and not found. For one reason or another, not been happy in a shelter, and they've moved back to a tent encampment or created a tent encampment. So we're trying to facilitate that scenario as well through this contract that has an I won't say an open end, but an option to renew is my understanding from the reading of it. Correct? That's correct. Because it is a complicated issue, and it's hard to predict where this how it might evolve. Um, we just wanted to provide some options in order to accommodate should another encampment pop up. Yeah. And and sorry, just sure. and then my last uh, question. I'm just trying. So, this is for renting up to 50 chemical porta potties and sinks. So each one of the porta potties comes with a, a sink and a hand washing facility with soap. So when they do the twice a day cleaning. They would also clean the sinks and make sure they've got soap and I guess paper towels. That's correct, Mr. Chair. Okay. All right. Thank you. Those are my questions. Thank you. Um, speakers. I saw Councillor Holiday's hand first. Councillor Holiday. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so we deal with um, non-competitive procurements at uh, GGLC often. Um, and, and members often ask questions about them because the bar is really high, right? When, as a government, when we go through a, a, a competitive procurement process, there's 
there's a whole bunch of work that goes into that. There's a whole ton of transparency, but but when it becomes non-competitive, um, I think the public demands a higher bar for us to explain how we're using the public's money and why we're using the public's money. In this case, uh, this report is really clear. It's asking for $2.9 million for 50 toilets for two years. And if you go to the rationale section, it basically says, because the Office of Emergency Management asked for it. Uh, full respect, I mean, they are working very hard through a pandemic. They're dealing with a lot of issues. Um, I understand that they asked for things, but this is brought before GGLC with only that as rationale. And I think I think we've seen through councillors' questions today that, you know, there's a bigger issue here that we haven't talked about, and that is um, what the encampments mean, what the policy is around that. And I'm uncomfortable with a report that says, well, just because it was asked for. Um, I think we have to have that conversation. We have to have the rationale behind a two-year purchase. And let's think about that, right? Everyone is concerned about these encampments. They were concerned of the loss of public space. We're concerned about the welfare for the people that are in the encampments. We're concerned about the enforcement of the rules, all those sorts of things. But the signal is in this is that these are going to be needed for up to two years. And I'm really uncomfortable with that. I think we need to deal with the issue. And this is really just a, you know, a surrogate discussion or a manifestation of an issue that's not here before us on paper. And I think we also saw that because, you know, we asked some really tough questions of staff that are on the call today. And, and, and to, their, to their credit, you know, they did their best to answer, but they're only part of the larger picture. So they can only talk about their piece. We couldn't actually talk about the bigger piece. So, so I'm voting against this. Um, I'm not comfortable with it. I think, I think we really need to get into the discussion around the rationale for it. And that's what's missing in the report. Those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Holiday. Other speakers on this item? Councillor Matlow. I share I share the discomfort with it, perhaps from a different vantage point. Um, much of everything that I've been learning about the encampment uh, issue. I either learn from uh, what I see or what I read in the newspaper or what I hear about from colleagues or activists or, or others. Um, not from city staff. In fact, I read about what the city does and legal actions that it takes and either actions or uh, suggested inactions by what I read about in the media. I'm not uh, aware of their strategy. I heard from the deputy city manager today that it's complex. We agree on that. That's self-evident. But if there is a strategy and if there is a clear way to support people getting safe shelter with wraparound services that are secure and caring, if there's a way to get there, I would like to know what the strategy is. Um, there has never been a councillor briefing on this. There has never been the involvement of councillors in to that depth. Uh, even though we are the ones who are receiving the calls, and in some of our cases, we are the ones having activists show up at our front door with video cameras. So I want to know what the strategy is. I want to understand how these ancillary requests jive with the city's position. I want to understand holistically what the approach is, and I want to understand what the city's um, determined or aspirational outcomes are. Not ad hoc requests to spend money on toilets. So, um, my support can be earned once I have enough information to understand how these policy objectives jive. Um, to, 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 to believe that there are well-meaning and thoughtful people in a room somewhere having these discussions, I can believe that. But none of these people have actually come to me and I expect most of you at the table uh, and told us what that thinking is. So uh, I look forward to that conversation and I look forward to actually understanding what the city is, is working on and. Uh, what the city's position is uh, in total 
uh, a little a little more than what I read about in the newspaper. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Matlow. Other speakers? Sorry, I did have uh, Councilor Mansus. Did you wish to speak? Yes. Councilor Nunziata, did you wish to speak? Councilor Mantis going to move his motion. Yes, yes, Councilor Nunziata. Okay, did you want to move your motion? Sorry, uh, Councilor. Yes, yeah. that's okay. Sorry. Through the chair, uh, yes, ma'am. Matthew, is, is, is the uh, motion on the screen? Uh, Mr. Chair and Councilor Mantis, uh, we've uh, we can display Councilor Mantis' mode now. I don't think you've seen it before uh, yet. So um, okay. take a look at it now and let us know if that uh, this is match matches what uh, your intent is. Yes, that would bring it to one point four. Sorry, maybe we just get some clarity from staff. Ms. Carboni, Ms. Uh, Romoff, if does this reduce the value of the contract to 1.4 million? Through the chair, uh, I, I believe we're gonna have to change the numbers. So it, it, it mm -hmm. can't be increasing the current value from 591 to 3.4, it, 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 it's a, I'm just trying to get the the math um, yep. and send it to to, to Matt to send the clerk. So maybe can we uh, hold Councillor Mansus' speaking time down while staff um, finalize or finesse the numbers, and we'll go uh, to other speakers on this item. A point of order, Mr. Chair. If I may Mayor suggest, Holiday. yeah, I, I part of the things that I heard from Councillor Mantis was that he was thinking that there could be a report back before the second renewal is made, and I wonder if that's more expedient than the motion to to ask that staff come back before exercising the year two option. I don't know if that would satisfy it and make things simpler or not. Councillor Mantis. I agree. Uh, this way, we can uh, we can consider next year's um, the uh, the the remaining amount for next year. So we're only going to authorize for this year's up to twenty two. Well, I think the concern from staff as well. Sorry, on my own point of order, I guess. Is that so they've utilized 22, but they think they might need 50 is kind of their safe level. Uh, through the chair, but we can authorize 23 next year, which would be the additional 1.4. If I can just to clarify, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I think the, uh, the maximum is, is we want to be able to access up to 50. So it's not uh, 23 each year. So I'm sorry, I'm not sure if it's appropriate for me to be answering at this point. Uh, through the chair, Ms. Rama, if I understand, it's it's up to 50 um, portable toilets for the two years, every year for the two years. What I'm asking is we authorize for this year and then we come back next year to authorize for the remaining, for the additional year. Yeah, through the chair, we're fine with that. Okay. 
through the chair, it's Julie, I'm, I'm sorry, it's not appropriate. Yep. One suggestion. That's okay. I think, I think Deputy Mayor Holiday had a good, good suggestion to try and make the motion simpler is that if we can just put a provision in the rec an additional recommendation that staff do not have uh, exercise the option, the second year option without coming back to committee. And that way we don't have to recalculate all the numbers. So it would just be. Not do, you, do you understand that one? I'm not sure if Michael's still on it. Well, you can might be. He might be better able to write that up quickly for committee's consideration. Mr. Chair, we can we can work with staff uh, to come up with something in Councilor Mantis. Um, I'm not sure if it's possible to go into uh, or to guess, just give us a few uh, a few minutes to work with that. Yeah, sounds like yeah. this is right. uh, pretty important. Yep. Are there other members of the committee that like to speak on this? If I can see your hands. Councillor Nunziata, so while, why don't we hold down Councillor uh, Mantis's time and his motion, I'll let staff work on it. And then uh, count Speaker Nunziata, if you'd like to speak. Sorry, Speaker, you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay, uh, thank you. Just briefly, I, I, I share the same concerns that Councillor Holiday and Councillor Matlow has. Um, you know, the, the plan, um, the city plan is, is to provide housing and um, not uh, have additional encampments and to provide the housing for people that are in need and put them in shelter. And in my opinion, by adding uh, portable toilets, we're uh, encouraging, uh, not discouraging. Um, so I really have a problem with this. Um, I I don't know. Um, um, you know, uh, Janie mentioned that uh, the need um, has uh, that there's a higher need now, and um, but I thought that what we were doing with all the housing uh, projects and. Uh, shelters that we were actually providing housing and trying to get the uh, homeless into shelters or uh, permanent housing. Um, so I really have a problem with this recommendation. Um, you know, so I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Speaker Nunciata. Other speakers on this item? Sorry, Councillor Fillion, I just wanted to check in with you. Did you want it? No, I have nothing to add, thanks. Okay, all right. Thank you, Councillor Fillion. So, um, I guess we'd, we're just waiting on staff. So, I, I just wanted to say a few words about this. Um, you know, I understand that the city's goal, you know, it's a very admirable goal that we want to get people out of the homelessness encampments that, that we want them in in permanent uh, housing, which, um, you know, I think we there's a number of jurisdictions around North America that have that same goal. Um, there's been talk about London, Ontario, which just recently announced that they have end homelessness. And I don't know how many of their homeless people moved out of London and came to Toronto. And we've had an issue for years of people coming from the surrounding municipalities where, you know, God bless them, they don't have any homeless shelters. Um, but we seem to have, you know, a lot of homeless shelters and now we have encampments. And I think trying to get people out of the encampments and into uh, permanent housing, I think that's great. It's a very admirable goal. Um, but at the same time, I've been reading reports in the media I, I've talked with people that, that are living in my parks in Eastern Scarborough, and they've gone into shelters. They, for one reason or another, uh, they've left shelters. Um, there's also people that expect not to see people defecating in our parks, uh, urinating in our parks. Um, they want washroom facilities, whether it's all year round um, or for, encampments and i think while 
we work towards the city's goal of closing the encampments down. We do need washroom facilities in those parks. At the same time, I'm not sure that people are going to stay in shelters, that they're going to go back to encampments. And while we try to find those people a happy resolution to get them the housing that they need, we're going to need temporary um, toilets. So I think we need to move forward on this. Um, we can review it in a year and see where we are. Um, but I think there's there's a, a requirement there, um, both to help people and encampments and make sure that our parks are up to the standard, um, both for use and a health standard that the members of the general public uh, need. So I think we need to move forward with this item. Thank you. Matthew, how are we doing? Mr. Chair, I think, uh, just give me one quick second to open a couple of emails here. Okay, uh, Mr. Chair, just give uh, give me one second to add a couple words to Councillor Mantis's motion, and we can uh, we can split it up. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, uh, we will um, display Councillor Mantis's uh, motion on item GL 2313. Okay, thank you, Matthew. Councillor Mantis, you can uh, speak to your item, your motion, and we'll restart the clock. Okay. Uh, through the chair that the general government licensing committee requests the general manager parks forestry and recreation and the chief procurement officer to bring forward a request to authorize an additional year on on that to the general government and licensing committee for approval if an extension of the contract is required mr chair question of the mover yep councillor holiday um and respectfully, uh, Councillor Mantis, because I know that this this process electronically to get this motion sorted out is uh, is difficult. Um, I just wanted to be clear that your intent is year two of what's before us, because if I kind of looked at that quickly, um, I would say that the the recommendation before us says year one and year two. That's the staff recommendation. And this particular motion says that if if staff want to add another year, which I would interpret as year three, that they bring a report. And I just want to make sure that that's not your intention. And if there's any wording no. changes that 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 should be required. Um, um, and respectfully, because I think I know what your intention is, but we just want to make sure the wording is correct. Thank you. Through the chair, um, Councillor Holiday, you're correct. Uh, the intention is to bring a report next year. To, for us to be able to analyze and authorize the additional year for year two going into year three. So that's the intent. Thank you, uh, uh, Councillor Mantis. And uh, through you to Mr. Chair, uh, I just want to make sure that you're comfortable with the, the motion uh, and staff are comfortable that Councillor Mantis's intentions are accurately captured. Okay, thank you, Councillor Holiday. Other questions of the mover? Councillor Nunziata, Speaker Nunziata. Yeah. So what we have before us, Councillor Mantis, is a contract for two years. Yes. Right, so your motion is if they need an additional year, then they have to come back, which Councillor Holiday is correct for uh, for three years. No, what, what uh, sir, through the, um... Through the chair, uh, Madam Speaker, what I'm asking is we allow year one and next year staff has to come back to us and for us to authorize the second year. So the total okay. amount would still be 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2
but we're only authorizing the 1.4, half of it for this year. Okay, I just wanna make sure that staff are clear on this because um, I, I don't see the the motion that it uh, uh, that it reflects on what you're saying. I, I don't know. I don't know. Is the staff understanding this? For the second year, to request the authorized the renewal for the second year on that contract. Yes, that's what, exactly, that's what it's saying. So to renew the renewal for the second year on the contract for approval, if an extension is needed for the second year. I understand that. I Okay, thank you. Sorry, Councilor Mantis. Thanks. Sorry, Juliana and Janie, just, are you clear? Is this clear for you just so you understand it's only for this extension of the second year and not that's not correct. to roll into a third or longer. Yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're clear. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, and I think that, sorry, Councilor Mansus, did you wanna say anything further? No, nope. sir, I'm done. Okay, perfect, thank you. I think everybody's spoken on this item. So now, uh, so we have the, Motion by Councillor Mansus to vote on, and then the item as a whole. Is that correct, Matthew? That's correct, Mr. Chair. We'll put up uh, okay. Councillor Mansus's motion on the item now. Mr. Chair, may okay. I request a recorded vote on the item as a whole? Yep. Do you want a recorded vote on Councillor Mansus's motion? No, no, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, just a hand vote. Okay, Councillor Mansus's uh, motion. All in favor? And that carries. And then the item as amended, uh, recorded votes been requested by Deputy Mayor Holliday. Okay, Mr. Chair, um, all in favor of the item as amended by Councillor Mantis's motion. Nice as now, uh, Councillor, sorry, uh, Chair Ainsley. Councillor Mantis, Councillor Fillion. Those opposed. All opposed, please. Councillor Holliday, Deputy Mayor Holliday, pardon me. Speaker Nunziata, Councillor Man, uh, Matlow. Mr. Chair, that is three in favor and three opposed. Uh, that item does not carry on a tie. Okay, and so does it go to council without recommendation? Uh, Mr. Chair, um, yeah. let me just seek some advice on that, please. Okay, just so we're, the members of the committee are clear and staff are clear. Mr. Chair, yes, this item will uh, be forwarded to City Council without recommendations. Okay, all right, thank you, Matthew. Our uh, next item is GL 23.15, Amendment to Blank and Contract number 470-23379 with Salesforce.com Canada Corporation held by Councillor Fillion. Councillor Fillion, do you have questions of staff? Uh, just a couple, and I'll try to answer, ask these in a way that we don't need to go on camera for the answer. Um, can someone tell me the component of the uh, components of the cost and how that uh, compares in the extension to what already uh, exists uh, without having to give the price if that's a problem um, is the Price the same? Are the components the same? Is there um, anything that is different? Um, thank you very much through the through the chair, um, Councillor Fillion. 
Um, the components, which you mean the licenses, are licenses that were originally, they're part of the same. They're extending licenses to allow for the customer service representative in 311 as well as under other licenses to utilize the product. Um, the price is the same. Um, it's the extension of um, just the ability to purchase more as um, the business uh, needs are required. Um, okay, and that's the, the only component of the cost is the licenses themselves? That's through, through the chair, that is correct, Councillor Fillion. And are there other terms that are related to value that the city is getting? Or is um, it just strictly the license? Um, through the chair, it's, it's the ability to go to Salesforce and procure more licenses. The terms and agreements from the master service agreements are still the same and in place. So I, and so I just am a bit confused on the last point because on the briefing, Yesterday, when we ran out of time, someone was uh, talking about a very extended period of negotiation. And I'm not so, clear on what that negotiation was for if the only component is the license itself and that price is the same. So, through the chair, in the briefings we provided to you, um, the conversation was in the initial master service agreement that was executed in 2018. That was the conversation for making sure the city got the best value. Um, so, once that negotiation was completed in 2018, um, that was done. As we now come in terms of seeking through the recommendation, uh, the authority in terms of uh, um, to have an opportunity to purchase more licenses, there are no changes to those negotiations, there are no changes to those terms, and it's really enacting that existing agreement from 2018. Okay, thank you. Those are all my questions. Thank you, Councillor Fillion. Are there questions on this item of staff? Seeing none, um, I have a just one. Um, Gary York. Gary, could you explain a bit? So, so I think um, what we're debating today, it's a key component of uh, 311 and the modernization efforts that you've been doing. An excellent job of undertaking with 311. Uh, could you just explain some of the benefits for uh, the 311 call center and the 311? process by um, approving this uh, item today? Uh, thank you, Councillor, and that's a great question. Uh, really, the benefits drive from, uh, one, from a financial perspective. When we're looking at utilizing these licenses, one of the key benefits from a, from a financial perspective is normally our, our cost per transaction is anywhere from $11 to $16 based upon complexity. So a general inquiry versus a service request per se. Now, looking at utilizing the Salesforce platform, and when we're looking at these transactions, about 1.4 million of these transactions that we're, we're, we're processing on a yearly basis. So there's tremendous amount of savings that happen there. But also from an agent's perspective, internal in terms of creating that record and, and, and for that resident, um, the touch time uh, with this particular solution means there's at least 26 to 30% reduction in touch time to create that, that, that request. So instead of it being four odd minutes, it's almost three and a half minutes now per, per incident. So that means we, we can get that resident, uh, that issue addressed and documented in a much faster and timely fashion. The other, the, the really the, the one of the strongest things that come along with the solution as well is self-serve. So if we're looking at uh, empowering our residents, not necessarily to connect, or sorry, call the city, but to connect with the city. So that connection means you can connect via phone, via email, uh, via the web, uh, via social media, and what have you. So now you have multiple ways of connecting with the city not just via the phone. And you can choose how you can contact or be contacted once that, that issue is rectified. And I know something that's very near and dear to you is the attachments. So when someone's uh, walking down the street and, and taking a picture of a pothole, they can easily take that picture and they'll send it to us and we have that record and that division also has that record. So in terms of you know that, that user and then overall experience, uh, this solution is very, very key to modernizing and, and really empowering our residents uh, to, to manage their assets and their issues the way they're comfortable doing it versus the city dictating it to them. I hope that answers your okay. question. Perfectly. Thank you, Gary. Much appreciated. Mr. Mr. Chair, I apologize. I, I did get inspired to ask a question, if that's okay. Deputy Mayor Holliday. Thank you. Uh, hopefully this is uh, 
this is helpful in understanding the report before us. I noticed that the, if I've got this right, that the money is coming out of corporate real estate management capital program, sub program customer experience. And I wondered if staff could tell me why, why CREM is paying this bill ultimately. I guess it's transferring it or it's coming over to 311 effectively, but could, could we know why CREM is involved? Uh, through the chair, uh, what we did was the consolidation of budgets. So uh, eventually that budget will not only be, uh, we moved it from 301 to CREM, but that budget will eventually be moved under uh, technology services as well. So if you look at certain uh, aspects such as Varent and Cisco, we've been able already to move it from 311 slash CREM because we're under uh, the, the cluster uh, or service category for Josie. But at the end of the day, all those type of uh, endeavors and budget will be managed through Lawrence's organization versus ours which provides centralization and the level of clarity and understanding and responsibility around the, the, the management of those funds. Is CREM you going to use the system? Uh, CREM will be uh, a benefit of the system, yes, for, for room bookings and things of that nature. So they will also have right. the, the benefits of that solution as well. So the, so the concept is, is you're centralizing the resources into the system from the different program areas because those program areas are no longer going to run the system in their own house. You've got the master system now, which is Salesforce. So, in order to have the the Salesforce program run centrally, you've got to take the money from the different areas. Is that is that a correct understanding of what's before us? Uh, yeah, uh, through the chair, yes, it is. And it's really about being responsible and understanding and and uh, having proper governance around the utilization of the licenses. So it's not just everyone who wants the licenses will have them. It has to have a business uh, a proper business case, uh, case and rationale. And, and making sure that the budget, which, who is controlled by Lawrence and team, uh, gets the appropriate approvals as well. So there's rhyme and re uh, reason to how we're, we're, we're looking at applying this solution across the enterprise in a controlled, uh, responsible fashion. And just Isn't to add that... that Sorry, Sorry, just to ahead. add, just to build on that uh, uh, through the chair, Deputy Mayor Holiday, it's, it's also a strategic approach to ensure that we have the appropriate parties, certainly on the technology footprint, that can ensure we're taking a city-wide view, as opposed to um, being in division-wide view, sort of from an enterprise. So, just to build upon that, this is a this is something that we've been trying to centralize through Josie's leadership and through corporate services to provide that lens for the overall city. Mayor's Josie, yeah, through the uh, through the chair, it was a placeholder for the time being. And what we're going to do is actually put into the right uh, division, but we just needed a placeholder of building on these solutions and that will be corrected for 2022. Okay, and just, just conceptually the report, this is an increase in the number of seats. Of, and it's basically people using the Salesforce platform. I think we started with four services and if I've got it right, uh, um, I guess Gary, you know, it's going to grow and include other services. And is that what we're seeing here? Uh, uh, through the chair, uh, absolutely. So when we did the initial pilot uh, and we, we came to initially for, for, for approvals, we, we did a subset of, of, of maybe 10 service requests. Now through this evolution, we're doing 600 service requests. But also the other thing that we need to take into account is the knowledge base and how we manage the content. And this is more than just a 311 uh, initiative. It has to be an enterprise initiative because the, for example, when we talk to solid waste, if we don't have access to the same content via the licenses and subscription model, we won't be able to, to manage that event in a timely fashion from a 360 degree perspective. So managing the content and looking at the self-service aspect that we're trying to drive, especially from a user building a positive experience perspective, but also from a business and, and, and cost management perspective, they're very key. And we're making sure that this is done in a holistic manner. So this is, although 301 is driving the change, it, we're, you know, it takes a village to drive this, and there's many, many organizations and divisions that are part of this particular journey as well. So, this, so we'll probably see other reports that are similar to this as the system grows, if I understand yes. that correctly. Yes, through okay. the chair, through the chair, you will. Yes, but we are also, you know, making sure that from a taxpayer standpoint and a due diligence that due diligence that we purchase the licenses as we need it. Um, so that we utilize it when we need it. And it's not essentially just sitting on the shelf. Um, we, that, that, that's why we come back with these reports as we grow the environment to provide the, the return on investment. Okay, and that was part of the vision from the beginning. I, can I take it? Because again, I just, I, we just had a conversation about a you know, single source contract, but 
but if I understand it correctly here, that is that is part that is a, a contemplated part of this process that once a vendor was selected, as the need grows and as the number of users grow, as the business changes take place to use the system, you will only buy those licenses when you need them. And by by its definition, it is a you know a, a non competitive or a, a single source to procure these because that's the software of record. Uh, through the chair, that is correct. Now there was a competitive process that happened uh, through that select this within the market, but you're right. It gives us the opportunity to expand as we need it. So your description is accurate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Holiday. Other questions of staff on this item? Seeing none, uh, speakers, Councillor Filion, you held this item? Um, I just held it for questions. Thanks. I'm fine with it. Okay. All right. Other speakers on this item? Seeing none. Uh, at this point, I just want to uh, thank staff again for all of their uh, their hard work on this and their diligence and uh, dedication. Um, and I get to use my favorite phrase again, kicking and dragging the city of Toronto, kicking and screaming into the 21st century. Uh, you know, this is going a long way to bring us into the, the 21st century. Um, and I'm talking about adding up to, you know, 650 services. And I think the one that's uh, most prominent for people uh, and they interact with so much on a daily basis is 311. And I've expressed my uh, angst to Mr. York uh, um, just over the past month over, you know, uh, walking around my ward and and taking pictures. And I know they are getting to the appropriate staff um, pictures of my concerns, I'll use the example of graffiti, uh, are getting to Bell Canada and Rogers and, and Toronto Hydro. There was a time um, not that long ago, if I took a picture of some of the complaints and, and sent it into 311, um, I you know, used to say off to Never Never Land. I never saw that picture again. I would actually have uh, staff call me from the respective division or agency and ask me where the graffiti was or, or where the pothole was. And I used to leave me scratching my head because I would say, oh, I sent you a picture. Oh, we never got the picture. Or, you know, our your picture is a blur. And I'd look at my phone and I'd say, I don't understand it. The picture is clear as day for me. Are the attachments clear? Or, you know, where exactly did the picture go? Nobody seemed to knew seem to know and you know that's just one example on the front end of not only how counselors uh, but more importantly our residents are going to be able to interact with the city and that's only the tip of the iceberg uh, of how our staff are moving forward on the technology front to make city government uh, much more user friendly um, and much just overall much friendlier for the average person to use and i think that's an important milestone for us today, and I want to thank staff for all of their hard work, dedication, and as I said, diligence in uh, make, moving us forward. Um, so we have the uh, recommendations before us. All in favor? And those carry unanimously. Thank you. Our uh, next item, do, 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 sorry. Our next item is GL 23.18, request for a report on options to address the outstanding tax arrears for the Greek community of Toronto at 136 Soririn Avenue in uh, Ward 4. That was our first item of new business, which was introduced by Councillor Mansus. Does anybody have any questions of Councillor Mansus? Seeing none. Uh, speakers on this item, Councillor Mance. I'm I'm good. Okay. Uh, so we have the recommendation before us. All in favor? And that carries. Our uh, next item is number nineteen, a second new item of business introduced by Councillor Filion, 
food incubator tenancy program at 5200 Young Street in Ward 18. So you wish to speak to it, Councillor Filiam? Um, just briefly, thanks. So it's a report that um, wasn't in, done in time to uh, make the regular agenda. It's a staff report. Uh, I'd like to thank staff for working very hard to get it in in time for this meeting. The uh, timing is critical because we've already put out a call to uh, to vendors and need a process for approving them. Um, it's a really exciting project and um, which I started, I think more than 10 years ago, it's taken this long to actually come to pass, but um, it is um, section 37 funds were used from uh, two developments to secure um, indoor retail space, half of which we have, half of which is still um, to be built. Um, and uh, section 37 was used to totally equip the kitchens and this will allow uh, food vendors to come in new fit food vendors um, um, and we will be hoping to get um, members of disadvantaged communities um, who have some experience in, um, in food uh, preparation and retail, but have never had the, um, you know, the, the resources to put together to actually start up a business. So this will give them a, a below market rent and some um, expertise in, in starting a food business and um, they'll have uh, a couple of years to get those off the ground and then um, hopefully move to uh, uh, a market rent, um, you know, somewhere in the vicinity and uh, allow someone else to come in and do the same thing. So uh, it's a really great opportunity for potential vendors. Um, it will also be kind of exciting for the community because they'll get to try out um, all sorts of new products, both with the four permanent vendors that we're starting up with, but also with uh, kind of an experimental kitchen at the front that will be operated by a nonprofit group. So um, really kind of fun, exciting project, all good news. Okay, thank you, Councillor Fillion. Uh, questions of the mover? Saying none, uh, can I fill in? I'll just say that I'm fully supportive of it. I think, uh, you know, in this day and age where food security is becoming uh, a huge issue for many communities across uh, the city, this is a very exciting project and uh, good use of Section 37 funding and uh, wish your community nothing but success for it. Thank you. Uh, so we do have the recommendation before us on this item. All in favor? And that carries unanimously. All right, thank you. Uh, Matthew, I think we're done. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, you've completed your agenda. We don't have any uh, bylaws for this meeting, just to confirm. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you very much, Matthew. Uh, a motion to adjourn. Councillor Nunziata, seconded by, sorry, Speaker Nunziata, seconded by Deputy Mayor Holiday. All in favor? Thank you. Uh, meeting is adjourned. I hope everybody and your families remain safe and well. And uh, thank you to staff for all your uh, work today on today's meeting. Thank you. Thanks.